So the first thing that started going wrong is um, flow, main channel, right? Deep water in the main channel over there. So when, when the mouth is open and it's raining, water is moving fast down the, the channel, scouring, carrying sediment with it. And then it goes out to sea, right? So, so the, the main channel is always going to be deeper than any of the, the areas out of the main direction of flow. This area was, was not possible to ever be in the main flow. So as a consequence, this area tends to accrue or tended to very rapidly accrue fine sediments, the silts. So it quickly, the, the channels that were dug out with excavators and bulldozers and stuff quickly filled in and they filled in with muck. So they filled in with stuff. Uh, anytime we have lack of water movement, we have not a lot of oxygen exchange. And so we get re a reduced environment. We get sulfurous compounds, smells like rotten eggs, smells like poop, smells like stinky old food kind of thing. That's not necessarily bad, right? I mean, that, that's part of the system, but, uh, but it, it was pretty bad over here, right? And if you are a gazillion millionaire, Hollywood A-lister, and you have this great house and it smells like poop, um, they don't like it, shall we say, right? So what's the problem? What's the problem? So the immediate prop finger becomes pointed at tapia. So we're talking now we're in the 70s, early 80s, right? So tapia, oh, those bastards. Sewage treatment plant must be letting poop go in the water. Those guys are such bastards. So then a whole series of events happen. Long story short, tapia really changes. Tapia does, has, has been very uh, um, forward thinking and very um, sort of engaging with these issues. So now, for the most part, if we're in the middle of a big winter downpour, and you know, and sometimes our sewage treatment plants can't handle all the liquid at one time, they will dump water into the main channel. But the default condition, so again, if you guys came down Las Virginis, and in fact, if you, even if you didn't come down Las Virginis, but if you don't have to run home, and you guys do live some way that away, drive home via Las Virginis, right? The, the, the Malibu Creek Canyon, the, the, the road by Pepperdine right up there drive and you'll drive you'll pass tapia and then you'll keep going and just almost till you get to the 101 um you'll be driving it'll be candy candy it'll start to open up as you're getting close to the 101 and then you're going to see some fields on the right those are purchased those are owned by tapia <clears throat> so they take their water their their, their their treated water but then the, instead of discharging the treated water into the into the river they take it and they have impact heads, sprinkler heads, and they water this field, and that water percolates through the grassland, the soil, etc. I mean, eventually it, it, can, it goes in the creek because we're in a watershed, but it's another filtration mechanism, right? And that, and and so that was in response to concerns about water quality that they were screwing up the water quality of Malibu Creek. So we did that, but guess what? It still stunk. Why? Or, or you guys probably tell me why, why? Or, or what's one of the main factors making the stink here or making, also tons and tons of algal blooms, lots of eutrophication. Build up standing water. Water, yes, but, but, but what's driving the, the eutrophication? What was driving the eutrophication? Stagnant water. Stagnant water, what? I couldn't hear you. No oxygen. No oxygen, right? That's a consequence of the algal of the algal individuals growing super abundant. Why were they Why were they growing so fast? Why are they growing so abundant? What was fuel? Off from the, um, agriculture. Oh, great guess! But there's no agriculture here. So the Jan say poop off? Yes, it was poop off. It was poop off from all these septic systems in here, right? So these septic systems are just leaching nutrients, right? And so these folks are like. Tapia, 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 tapia. And the reality is like, well, what about your toilet, 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 toilet? And they're like, no, no, it's tapia. It's the evil tapia, right? So that begins to set up the dynamic that we still have in place today, which is, uh, and I don't want to disparage anyone, but I'll just say in the, in the general sense, this, these folks here see the problem is coming from someone other than them, right? So they see the problem as the other, the other tapia, what, whoever is causing the issues, right? 
and it is and this is this is a common situation in dealing with restorations right some of the folks that are most um uh, most invested and most like the area most feel connected to the area um sometimes have very strong opinions not always informed by rigorous subjective looking at the problem okay so uh so we have this problem so everybody realizes oh my god the, the super smelly back here algal blooms it's not super you know low oxygen all those issues so we should fix that what should we do uh and uh there's also there's other parts of the story you guys can read the documents but the, the short version is when they when we put in the pch bridge and then and since then we've had to do like expansions and work because tidewater gobies are underneath in, in that in that channel and because one of the main ways you service or do work on these pilings is you take a take a take a take a rod and kind of like either either bang 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 put that put that piling into the mud or you you vibrate that into the mud that has impacts on the critters around there right if it was a bird the bird would go oh crap caw, 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 and fly away but the fish and invertebrates they can't they can't move right so whenever we do something like that we are going to kill harm hurt uh uh impact those low critters so so there was there was motivation to do some stuff about uh, uh, improve the condition for the endangered species, stuff of that nature. Okay. So it was about a 20 year period of us in discussions and 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 so full full disclosure, I've done I've been a part of some of these studies. So so I I have been involved with some of this, the monitoring and various things. So just so that we're all above boards here, um, I did not I provided input on the design of the restoration, but I did not do the restoration. But nevertheless, I, I have been at various times heavily involved with stuff that's going on here. So just just so if there's any dispute or somebody watches this video later or whatever, I don't wanna, I don't wanna say that I'm a completely independent person in this story. Okay, so how are we gonna fix this? Let's fix this. Now, the other thing I should have said uh, leading up to our, our, the restoration is the design with those three islands we had a bridge. So the parking lot was basically where we are here. The parking lot has changed in configuration, but it was basically here. But there was a walkway. There was a walkway that went basically from here over to the first island and then another elevated walkway to the next island and then out to Surf Rider, um, Surf Rider uh, Beach. We haven't talked about Surf Rider Beach yet. We have to talk about that too, but we'll do that when we get out there. Okay, so... So it's great. So if you wanted to go surfing, you could, you could park, whatever, just walk straight on out. Unfortunately, not only was this, the hydrology messed up in the sense that this was off the main channel, but we also had these additional bridges here for people to walk and that further constrained the flow. Even So when it, whenever the water would get in here, it was, it was even more stagnant and all that kind of stuff. Also the bridges defeated the point of having an island, right? Because if you got any benefit of a refuge for the predator when you build a walkway for them to get over, that doesn't quite work. Okay, so uh, jumping ahead, since we're I'm rambling on here, uh, jumping ahead, the um, uh, idea was, hey, let's get more flow over here. Let's try to not, I mean, it's always going to have low flow because it's an off-channel thing, but let's see if we can improve that a bit, okay? So the plan was, let's remove the walkway. This is, this is key. <clears throat> Pull out the walkway, but then how are people going to get to the beach, right? Oh, we'll take them over here. So we're gonna go, uh, as which we will walk in a few minutes, over there and then around the perimeter. That seems to make sense to me. Uh, again, shocker, if you have a gazillion million dollar house, people not too interested in having thousands of people a day walk in front of your expensive mansion. So the community here really didn't like that. Really, 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 really didn't like that. They much preferred to have the unwashed masses as far away from their house as possible. And so this, this uh, is another part of, of this anger. Ideally, when we do a restoration, ideally everybody is together, right? The community is like, oh, this would be great. And let's do that. I and mean, it's, it's always a problem to find money, but, but, but you know, at least conceptually, most people tend to be like, okay, cool. When we do a restoration, as we'll see from like in Carpinteria or these other places, the home values, the property values always go up. 
the recreational opportunities always go up. The community satisfaction, as far as I know, all the projects I've ever done or been associated with, the community satisfaction goes up. So it's mostly upsides, right? With the possible exception of a developer that would want to put a Walmart here. They maybe don't like that, but, but, but by and large, people are supportive. This has been a, an interesting outlier. As I still say that still applies here, but it's been, it's been pretty crazy. So fast forward to, to uh, making progress, getting money. And this is, you know, doing a restoration this size, tens and tens of millions of dollars. So this, this usually means some federal money, some state money, some donor money, some nonprofit. So it's, it's, it's a non-trivial thing to get the resources together. Okay. To get the resources together, you have to have a plan, a design, a restoration, like you guys are doing your mini proposal, right? As soon as these folks see that plan that starts getting shipped around, they start saying, whoa, 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 uh, hey, whoa, we want the, we like the walk over there, right? So for the most part, they did not acknowledge that their, that their um, <clears throat> uh, nutrient issues were the problem. And they still, they, they, they uh, and some folks, I have to be careful here. I don't want to be slanderous towards anyone, but I'll just say some folks encouraged uh, maybe not the most accurate results of re uh, accurate view of reality to dominate. So finally get the money together, start going forward. And I put a couple of these, a couple of news articles related to this in the, in our readings in the Malibu um, uh, module. People start saying things like, this is poorly designed, this isn't gonna work, and why do you think you know what you're doing, etc. cetera. Uh, to do any restoration, to do any manipulation, there's gonna be some temporary impact. It's, it's just a reality, right? If we're, gonna, if we're gonna rip out bridges, you have to have construction guys in here, you have to have some moving of sediment, that kind of stuff. And so some folks locked onto this said, oh my God, you guys are killing endangered species. Killing endangered species. This is evil, this is evil. Not, that we absolutely will have some small impact initially, but then once we finish the restoration, we'll have way more fish and it'll be way better for everybody, right? That's not part of the calculus. The calculus is very cherry picked to say, oh my God, you are killing things. So there's lawsuits, there's counter lawsuits. This is happening in the midst. I know everything's crazy now with our economy. This is happening in the midst of our last crazy economic implosion during the recession, right? During the Great Recession. One of the things that happens, I was furloughed. Your faculty members were furloughed. We may well be furloughed next year with, the, with, the, with our budget situation. Well, that meant, what is a furlough? Furlough means you're not, you're not laid off, but there's certain days of the week where you can't work. So there's this lawsuit funded by some of the homeowners here saying we should stop this. And so things are in the courts. And essentially because a state agency screwed up, and didn't have the full staff because of people being furloughed. They didn't get some of the documents to the court in time when during discovery. And so the judge said, this is BS. And so the judge put a temporary hold on the restoration. So the restoration did not start. That single factor costs you, the taxpayers, uh, many millions of dollars, just that single delay. That allows the folks that really didn't want to have this restoration happen, build, build force and build momentum. So by the time it's finally resolved, by the time we're going forward, we have a very tight window because we're now in a bad budget time and nobody, money's desperate all over, so we have to do this fast. One of the things that happens is we start coming in here, massive protests. And I, by massive protests, I mean hundreds of people protesting this, this situation. Uh, almost all of which completely ill-informed almost all of which cherry picking data. The only environmental group that stands up consistently, consistently, you know, any environmental group of any kind of large standing that stands up for this Surfrider Foundation. They were saying this restoration needs to happen. It'll be good. It'll help everybody else. And I mean, everybody else, Sierra Club, you name it, that were initially on board. As soon as the wealthy, powerful people here started protesting, they didn't, they didn't not support the restoration, but they way backed away. And they're like, you know what? This is too dangerous. This is too political a fight. We don't want to engender donations from folks. So we're just going to hang out. So as a consequence, there was the Santa Monica Bay Foundation that was doing the restoration. 
the consultants, and Surfrider, and then the rest of the community. So I, I'll be careful with my comments about the Malibu community, but um, uh, it became the du jour thing to, to talk about how evil the restoration was. So when this was starting, we had to spend over a million dollars to pay the Los Angeles County Sheriff to maintain 24 hour guard of the restoration. So there was a police substation, temporary police substation set up over there, a, a, a couple blocks over there with a trailer staffed 24 hours a day. Because there was such animosity and people were threatening to do all kinds of crazy stuff. They were threatening to do monkey wrenching. They were threatening to come in and, and, and rip out bulldozers, you know, destroy the bulldozers and all that kind of stuff. So that money that could have gone to better improvements in the restoration, uh, uh, textbooks for kids, whatever, we blew on overtime for sheriff folks so they could patrol this area because of these protests. These protests get so crazy, this one, um, uh, and very few people are speaking in favor of this one lady writes an op-ed in the local Malibu Times, I think it was, saying, hey, we should do this restoration. This is a great restoration. This is, this is be helpful for the community. It's good for the animals. It's gonna be good for people. It's gonna be good for everything. She got such hate. She was a, a, a was she EMT or fire, fire woman. I can't remember, one or the other. But um, she was having a real hard time at work. She had some, some difficult days. Um, she got so much hate, she actually killed herself. And while we can't say it was directly caused by the protests here, it absolutely was a factor in her mental health. She had, she had other challenges, but, but that's the level at, of which, we're, we're talking about a general, general debate here. People are saying ugly, ugly things. I mean, like really, really raunchy, disgusting things about people doing the restoration. So this is not the norm. We're not, <laughs> this is our first restoration site. This is not the norm, but this is clearly an outlier, but nevertheless, it's an important outlier. So. We start in 2012, start construction, do it. Construction wraps up in 2013. We have five years of, of intense, it was ongoing monitoring. We have five years of intense compliance monitoring and essentially everything gets better. Oxygenation gets better, less algal blooms, more native vegetation, whatever metric you wanna pick, things have gotten better. And so the folks that said doing this restoration was the death knell or horrible were incorrect. Doing this restoration has improved the ecological functioning. Doing this restoration has improved the, the stink, the smell around here. So people, you guys right here, school groups, whoever, it's great. We also added this area where we're sitting and we'll, we'll, we'll turn to start talking about elements here next. But, but so this is specifically to have better interpretation. So this is for kids Anybody can come here, but in particular, it's designed for large groups of kids from LA County USD, Unified School District. So we have that turnaround. We can bring buses in here. We couldn't bring buses any easier, very easily before. We have this big group area. And so now we have many more educational uh, uh, and interpretive options than we had before. And other design elements also really, really helped. So that's where we are now. So the five years of initial monitoring have wrapped up a, a year or so two years or so ago. And, um, and so we have continual monitoring, but, but we are where we are. So this is, this is a better condition. Can we make it better? Absolutely, right? We, there's, there's always other things we can do. When you design, when you talk about your plan, which you might want to do, because again, the, 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 the prompt is you guys, are, you guys were told by your boss, hey, there's an RFP to, to improve Malibu Lagoon, go take a look at it. I get that that there are constraints and we'll talk about them, but what are maybe some of the more realistic things? If we had a hundred million dollars, we could do something, but what if we had only, you know, a million dollars or $2 million, what could we do? So there are always things we can do. So even though it might sound like most of the restoration has been done here, we can always do more. Um, okay, so that's a bit of the, oh, sorry, there's one more. Yeah, Loretta. Right, right. So for folks watching this later, so Loretta was asking, what about, we, I, we mentioned before that uh, monitoring and then adaptive management or continual maintenance is, is, a, is a part of this. And so, so what, are they, what are they doing here for that? The answer is uh, they do a little bit of that. I mean, so the monitoring goes on. Uh, the resource uh, 
the Santa Monica Bay Foundation, uh, the Santa Monica Resource Conservation District d does most of that or coordinates most of that. Um, there's not a lot of active things that are done here. We'll talk about water quality when we get to the berm. There's not a lot that's actually done here, but, um, but I suppose in theory, you could come and scoop out some of the muck or something of that nature every so often, but there's no major budget item for large scale manipulation. There's budget items to maintain the parking lot and, and you know, trails and things, but not for the other things. So the question is, what about the septic tanks? So Malibu has been transitioning to a municipal sept to a municipal treatment system. So I believe all these are now. I, I'm not positive. But I believe these all are now on on sewage, um, uh, municipal sewage. Not all of Malibu is, but I believe this area is. Yeah. Why would they choose to have septic tanks over sewage? Oh, excellent. So the question is, why did they choose to have a septic system as opposed to municipal sewage and it was because when they first put these houses in and most houses in Malibu there was not an option for it didn't exist so now yeah so one of, one of the one of the best practices now is to is to any new houses should be put on the put on that system I think it goes up to Tappy I think I don't I don't know I think I think it does I think it does Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Yeah. Okay. The question is, what about incentives? Can we give, in, can we incentivize people to behave differently? Can we incentivize people to switch over to septic? Or sorry, excuse me, a municipal? And yeah, so you can just say it's the law. So, 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 so you can do that by zoning and different uh, city ordinances and things of that nature. Uh, I, I don't remember how they did it here, but everybody that that pos anybody with a nice house that has a decent um so so there's two reasons why people might not want to do sewage systems one because you you then have to pay a monthly bill right you have to like your garbage or electricity you get a you get a um a sewage district of a fine levied against you and so some people are like i don't know um the other is just it works better right so your your, your toilet doesn't plug up when the high tide comes in so there's some so some of this is just the fact that people can if they have the financial wherewithal, most people will switch over to municipal because it's just better. The issue comes in where we're usually in unincorporated parts of the county where you don't, the cities can mandate stuff, but usually unincorporated areas of the county can't mandate something like that. That gets more tricky. Um, but this is, this is not, this is, this area is incorporated a city of Malibu. Okay. There's one other thing I want to talk about before we start talking about the elements here and walking around, which is, uh, an example of, I don't know, I'll just say it's another, another, another effed up example. Okay, so over here, you watch my, my aerial drone tour or just look on Google Earth. You'll see uh, right immediately right here. So, so we mentioned before, we talked about nutrients coming in from tapia, nutrients coming in from here. There's another source. I think Jan said agriculture. It wasn't agriculture. Golf course. So golf course is notoriously bad matches. They don't have to be. In theory, you can design a golf course to work well with a wetland in theory. Um, but, but the way traditionally golf courses have been managed, lots of nutrients. You want to be super, super green, lots of pesticides. And so, so, okay. So over here, the guy that owns that property is, um, uh, or, or was, um, a, uh, you guys, we'll be done in a minute if you guys want this spot. You guys, we'll be done in a couple minutes. Okay. Uh, what were they saying? Okay, so big developer. One of the people that developed most of this area of Malibu. So super wealthy male. He decides he likes golf. So he has this piece of property and he says, I'm going to make this my house. Okay, make this my house. I'm going to put a golf course in. So he says, I'm going to put a golf course in. He's in the coastal zone. So the California Coastal Act says, yo, yo, dude, you have to get permission to do that. And he says, dude, I am me, right? Big old rich white dude, right? I should be able to do whatever I want, right? And so he goes, oh, I can't do that? Okay, so he builds a very nice stone cobble wall, which you maybe see if you walked along PCH. It's sort of nice, nice uh, sort of river stone wall. 
and then just puts a golf uh, like nine horse golf course in because he wants it it's completely illegally and his notion was oh, i got a, i got a wall nobody could see it as if no one could go up on the hill and look down right granted this was before google earth and it was super but so he does it and so problems ensue now this individual is a also because he's a developer knows how to work, grease the wheels big political campaign con contributor okay so magically no fines magically no fines just keeps going keeps going keeps going eventually it becomes so in the late 90s it becomes so conspicuous that this is totally illegal something has to be done so an agreement is reached with uh the powers that be that basically says, okay, well, I already put my golf course in, but here's the deal. And he married a, a younger lady. I'll just say that a significantly younger lady, decades younger than he was. It's a classic Hollywood story. Uh, and so uh, the agreement was when he dies, his spouse can live in the house as long as she wants. When she passes away, or chooses to sell it, then that property will revert to state. The state will take over. And at that point, the state could pull out the golf course. And, and some donations were made to people. <laughs> and so, so that area now essentially is, is going to become state property, but it's not yet. So he, he has passed away, but his much younger wife is still around. But whenever she not hoping anybody dies by any means, but whenever that time happens, that will then become part of us and you, we could maybe do some restoration over there possibly at that time or, or something else. Maybe we could sell part of the property and use part of that money to pay for other restoration, whatever. So, so the, the key constraints right now at this moment, shopping mall, uh, the bridge over the incoming water, golf course, Malibu colony. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's why I say those are the, those are the key those are the key external ones. Yeah. Yeah, it's a private house, private private home. Yeah, so it's a private nine-hole golf course. Yeah.